everybody, it's John, and I wanted to share a little bit about something that matters to me, uh, which is sharing your story and, and the, the power of sharing a story and how to share a story well. I think that stories carry hope, and right now in the world that we are living in, hope is a precious commodity and a lot of times a rare commodity. So the more that we can share our hope-filled stories, uh, the better off our world will be. One of my favorite things about God is the, the creativity that he shows in the way that he creates our individuality. When I was a kid, I used to I used to really want, it's really weird, so bear with me, but I used to really want to know what it was like to be someone else in its entirety. Like I used to really want to know what they what they were thinking and, and why they were thinking it and, and as they as someone else walked through a situation. I wanted to know with everybody. I wanted to know what everybody was thinking all the time. Kind of a terrifying thought now looking back on it. Um, that I would have wanted that. But whether you're young or old, you have a unique life experience and you have a unique perspective that, that's been formed from your family origins and your family relationships, from your social and relational experiences growing up, and from your natural thought patterns and your genetic tendencies. You are unique and that means that you have a story that needs to be shared. I think right away some people clam up at that moment when, when someone talks about sharing a story because either you don't feel like you have an interesting story or it's not inter as interesting as someone else's or you don't feel like you're comfortable sharing your story with other people and you don't feel like they'd want to hear it even if you did share. So I want to kind of start with a challenging thought. First Peter chapter 3 verses 15 says, says this, it says, In your hearts revere Christ Jesus as Lord and always be prepared to give a reason, an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you profess but do this with gentleness and respect. So God wants you to be ready to share the reason for your hope. He wants you to be able to, to give that reason because that shares his hope with the world. So he says do it with gentleness and respect, but you know, I wanna talk about sharing your story and I'm gonna talk specifically about sharing your faith story, but I also think that the, the, the principles, there's four principles that we're gonna go through. I think those that can actually be applied to sharing any story. So if you ever find yourself in a position where you're being asked to share something about yourself or share a story from your life, I want you to reflect back on these four principles. I think you'll find them to be really helpful. So, a four step recipe to crafting a story worth sharing. So one, look at your life from the third person view. You know how they have like video games where you play in the third person? I, I'm not really good at video games, but you play as like a, a character that you can see. So, so look at yourself like you were a character that you can see. Take a page out of my weird childhood and pretend that you're not you for a moment and look at your life as an observer and not as a protagonist. I think it's so easy to get caught in a place where all, we, we can forget where we've been because we are where we are and we're experiencing the things that we're experiencing right now and sometimes you have to take a step back in order to really understand where you've been and, and find the basis for your story. So if you're looking for a practical way to do this, create an actual physical timeline. Write down a, a line from, from you know, uh, have a starting point and you don't have an ending point because you're still breathing. So have a starting point and draw a line and then go through and, and place down the following markers. Any schooling changes, so when you started school, when you ended school, when you switched schools, uh, any career changes, so when you, when you started a new job or when you ended a job, when you got fired or when, when you got a job opportunity and didn't take it, it include all of those job career related changes on there. Geographic changes, did you move at any point in your life? Did, did you go from you know, where you, the United States to a different country? Did you live in a different United State uh, than the one that you had originally been born in? Even if it's as early as when you were born and you moved right away, include those things in there. Also, social changes. So any relationship changes that you experienced, whether that was the start of a romantic relationship, if there were huge friendships that were either started, that, that, that were pivotal friendships in your life or pivotal friendships that ended in your life, include those in there. If there are marriages, if there are divorces, include those in your timeline. And then if you are a Christian, if you're someone who professes faith in Jesus, when did you accept Jesus? Where did that occur in your life journey? So step one, look at your life from the third person, learn your past. Now that you have a starting point, you have all those starting points, what you need for a story is at least one turning point. And what I mean by that is as you look back at some point in your life, 
things stopped being one way and started being another way. And the reason that I had you write down those those different changes throughout your life, because a lot of times uh, our turning points are marked by one of those points in our past. But at some point, things stopped being one way and they started being another way. And sometimes this is good. Sometimes you it, you went from being lonely to being content, or you went from being anxious to, to feeling peaceful. And other times, turning points are really sad. And it, something was taken away from you, or your joy was taken away from you. Um, something you went from feeling like you were content and like you had lots of people in your life to feeling like you were alone. And actually some stories, a lot of great stories have multiple turning points in them. And so for someone who was well, looking to share their faith story, I think the best way to find your turning point is to ask yourself, what did Jesus change about my life and when did he change it? And that's not necessarily the same point that you started following Jesus, but at some point, Jesus changed something about your life. What was it that changed and when was it that it changed? So you have your starting point and then you have your turning point. The third thing that every story, every great story needs is a hero. And this is where your story will change if you are sharing about your faith. Because if, if you are sharing about a God story, then God will always be your hero. You know, if, if you're sharing a story about how good God is, then it makes sense that God will always be the hero. If you believe that God is the one who created you, if you believe that he's the one who saved you, then your faith story is actually a part of God's big story, his grand story of redemption and the way that he's redeeming our world. When I was in high school, I played football and our coach used to take us into our auditorium. And it was a big brick auditorium. And he would tell us that each of us um, was like a brick in, a, in an organization that was building. And it was a powerful analogy for us to understand that we were um, not bigger than, than anyone else, that we weren't more important than anyone else, but that we were also part of building something. And now picture this, your story is a brick in the expansion of the kingdom of heaven, of God's kingdom. And here's where I think we get, we get caught up sometimes. If you're the hero of your story, then the kingdom expansion with you stops at your brick because you, you won't be able to rescue someone else. You, you weren't created to do that. But if God is the hero of your story, what you actually do is you open up the door for him to then move in the lives of other people and create their stories. And that is how the kingdom of God is expanded and, and your brick becomes a brick in the expansion of the kingdom of heaven. So every story needs a hero. And if you are someone who professes faith in Jesus, then let me, let me encourage you Jesus is your hero. So you have your starting point, you have your turning point, and you have your hero. So at some point your hero changed your story. You started somewhere, you, your hero changed your story, and you had your turning point. The fourth thing that I think is important to every story is to leave it open-ended. And I actually think this is just as much for you as it is for anyone else, because when I think about the stories that I've shared, I always finish my story and then I think to myself, but it's not done yet. Like I, I am still walking through aspects of this story. And I think this is just as much as for you as it is for them, because if you're still breathing, then there's more to come in your story. If, if you're breathing, then God has work to do in your life. So while your story might have a beginning, you know, to quote the great Natasha Bedingfield, the rest is still unwritten. The rest of your story is still unwritten. If, if you are still breathing, God still has a purpose for your life for you to walk into. Your story is still being written. So leave your story unended. That's totally fine. Leave space for what God is going to do. So four steps of sharing your story. Learn your past. Learn, learn where you've been. Find your turning point. When did something change? Know your hero. Why did something change? And then understand that your story is not over yet. So what's an action step that you can take from this? I'm not expecting you to be, you know, rearing and ready to go to go share some of your story with someone right away. But I do want you to practice this. And I think it's important to practice if we are going to be ready to share for everyone who has asks us to give a reason for the hope that we have. So an action step that you can take right now write down a story from your life you don't need to go share it with someone right now uh, but the Bible tells us to be prepared to share a reason for our hope so write down your story you can type it or you can write it if you're watching this on YouTube right now you can type it in your in our comments write down a story from your life write down your story because the world is waiting to hear it much love to you thanks for watching uh, go share your story go change the world